Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. So if you're new here, then my name's Sam. I'm a trucker in the UK at the moment, but I'm gonna be telling you the reasons why I have decided with my family that we're gonna be packing up and leaving to move abroad. So first of all, the main reason, well, not the main reason, but one of the biggest reasons that I'm leaving the UK is I'm just fed up with this weather. It's mid-July, well, beginning of July, should I say. Beginning of July, and it's supposed to be summer, and look at it, it's miserable. It's just raining, gray clouds, it's just total. And one of the reasons why I find this weather so frustrating is because I have a young family. Um, my two daughters, they're just coming up to be four years old. And it's bad enough in the winter when you have to be stuck indoors all the time. But when you're literally stuck indoors all year round, because look at the weather now, you might get the odd day here and there. You just want to do normal things like just take your kids to the park or go to the beach, or something like that. But you're so restricted. So as you can see, it started to rain. So it's cut my walk short and I'm probably gonna have to do the rest of this video sitting in my cab. So it's not only does it restrict you from going out with your family, it restricts you from just doing little things like this, like getting watermarks all over your lens. Yeah. So anyway, let's head back into my cab and uh, we'll talk about the rest of the reasons when I'm in there. Right, so finishing off where we left, oh, in the cab. The weather, that's right, the weather. We were talking about the weather. So, <laughs> I am the sort of person that likes to be warm. I don't like cold climates. Maybe that's just because I've lived in a cold climate for so long. And maybe when I get out to a hot climate, I might change my mind. I might <laughs> long for it, but I can't see that being the case. So, it doesn't help as well that my partner and one of my children is ginger so that's going to be quite an adaptation for them but we'll see how it goes so the second reason why we are leaving is the cost of living inflation in this country has rocketed through the sky and i know that's a global problem it's pretty much everywhere but the wages here just don't seem to have moved it's like we're just stuck in a the 90s the early 90s so it would seem getting a house getting on the property ladder for some people is an absolute nightmare especially now with the interest rates it's just ridiculous um, lucky i bought my house before everything sort of went to pot and <coughs> our interest rates went up we were paying uh what was it i think we were paying about 700 pound a month and that's rocketed up to almost £1,200 a month for a very modest three bedroom house. <clears throat> and now if you want to rent, that same house is going to cost you £1,500, £1,600 a month. So you're even more buggered if you're renting, which just means that you're just not going to be able to save to buy your own house in the long run. Now, one thing that I will say about this country, and it's not something that I usually want to get involved with, especially on here because it's very controversial is politics this country and politics is just beyond me we got two parties to choose from conservatives or labor one is to the right and one is to the left where's the middle ground there's no in between it's just literally you've got a choice of them or them and to me they neither of them represent me so for me it's just one of those things where it's not going to change is it you're going to have one party in for four years or in this case 14 years wrecking the country a certain way and then you're just going to go back to the other party that are just going to undo everything they've done and do the total opposite it's just a total mess in my opinion and the politicians that we've had over the past 14 years i mean so many scandals nobody seems to know what they're doing it's just one thing after the other 
and I think it's only going to get worse. So yeah, that's as far as I'm going to go with the politics. In you probably say, <clears throat> where would I sit in between? I don't know. I don't think there is a party. Um, people say vote reform because they're fed up with immigration. People say vote. Lib Dems because they want more immigration oh, honestly like it's just one of those things where it's like why can't they just be a party that has a very normal sort of consensus about these issues rather than just being one extreme to the left and one extreme to the right it's ridiculous but anyway that's all I'm going to say on that and yeah on to the next issue and now the next issue sort of leads us nicely on from politics, I guess, and that's our beloved NHS. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm 33 years old now, and I can remember a time where you would be able to go and see a doctor on the day and not really have much of a problem in getting an appointment. Now you ring up at eight o'clock in the morning in some cases, You'll sit there in a queue, you'll get through, and they'll say, oh, we can fit you in in three weeks time. That's great, I might be dead by then. Thank you for that. Um, I had a incident not so long ago, so for any of you that follow my channel on a regular basis, I had a little bit of a health scare. Um, basically, I had some bleeding in my back passage. I know, sorry to be a bit graphic to let you know. Obviously, I was really worried and I called up the doctor straight away, tried to get an appointment, couldn't get an appointment at all. I tried ringing up at eight o'clock in the morning, all the appointments were fully booked. They said we can fit you in in, I don't know, it was like three weeks time from when, when they actually, when I actually rang. And in the end, I had to have a consultation over the phone with a doctor and eventually got in and saw the doctor and luckily it was nothing serious um, yeah got around to it eventually but I've heard stories from other people family members friends where they have just been fobbed off and the same with a dentist if you're on an NHS dentist or trying to get on with an NHS dentist forget about it you gotta go private now because I don't know, maybe they're just so overswarmed, understaffed, underpaid, maybe they're all leaving like me. So social life is going to be one of the ones that um, is a big factor for me um, and this kind of ties into um, the cost of living. Now it's so expensive to go out on a night out with your friends, even just popping down the pub for a couple of pints, you're looking at almost six pound a pint. Now, you can go to the shop and get four beers for maybe a fiver, if you're lucky, but it's just ridiculous. You just wanna go out and socialize with your friends and you're gonna be looking at, by the time you've paid for a taxi, had a few drinks, maybe got something to eat, you're looking at almost over a hundred pound, if not more. So yeah that's something that really annoys me about this country it's very hard to have a social life when everything is so expensive and not only that being a dad myself i rarely get the time now as it is to go out and socialize so for me i'm looking at moving somewhere where it's a little bit more community community orientated a little bit more close-knit and I think where I'm going offers that and I know this because I have a friend already out there that has had that experience so I'm really looking forward to that part of it. One thing as well is transportation in this country so I'm a lorry driver and obviously I can see the cost of fuel how much it's gone up in the past well what now it must be three years, four years, sort of just started happening around COVID time, didn't it? Everything sort of went up and it was like we were almost fooled into this sort of false sense of belief. So it shot up to like two pound a litre in the UK. And then 
they bought it down and then they bought it down to about what's it now i think it's about one pound 60 a litre and people were like oh yeah one pound 60 a litre that's not too bad actually yeah like yeah we remember when it was two pound it's like yeah but no before they shot it up to two pound it was one pound 20 a litre so they kind of gave this sort of I don't know if you've ever been to a, like a, a shop and you'll go in there and there'll be a bag of crisps that will be three pound and you're like, I'm not paying that. And then you'll go back in there like a week later and that same bag of crisps will be one pound 50. And originally, if you saw it at one pound 50 in the first place, you would have thought, well, that's a bit expensive. But because you saw it at three pound before and now you've seen it at one pound 50, it tricks your brain into going oh yeah that's a good deal it's not you're being conned and it's not just fuel you look at your insurance to run a car now road tax so on and so forth it all adds up and it's all expensive now i'm sure that this might be the same where i'm going that might be expensive too but at least the fuel's cheaper one thing that i definitely will miss is the british culture as in the british banter just that sort of yeah i suppose just that part of being part of britishness i suppose um that that will be hard i think that'll be the, probably the biggest and hardest part for me to adapt to a different culture in terms of i don't know it's hard to explain what is acceptable what's funny what's not funny in the culture where i'm going now i've been told that they are very similar to us um but i guess i'll just have to wait and see and find out so for those of you that don't know that haven't been following my channel and um, watching my videos then where I'm going is Western Australia. So not too far from Perth. It's a little town, sort of two or three hours out. Um, my partner, she's a teacher and she secured a job there already. And yeah, it's just a case now of putting all the pieces together and yeah, making that big move. Um, it's been a very fun but stressful time um selling the house all that stuff yeah it, it's been a journey already and we're only sort of a quarter of the way there if that so yeah if you are interested in following my journey then uh, make sure that you uh stick around subscribe like and all that good stuff and hopefully i'll see you on the next video and i can show you what it's like to live out in australia